Hi everybody, <laughs> sorry about that. Took a little moment on the end card right there. How y'all doing? Welcome to day one of our daily creative challenge for Photoshop. As you can see by my nice little lower third, I'm Kathleen Martin, I'm your host. Uh, for the next two weeks for this daily creative challenge where we're going to be creating a zine together. So today's the first day of the actual challenge. We're going to jump into Photoshop and learn a little bit about setting type in Photoshop. Because since it's a zine, that means there's going to be words, probably. Uh, and we'll chat about the topic of my zine in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to give a shout out to everybody in chat. What's up, Davika? Uh, Marla, Jess, hello, Fairy, hi, good to see you. If you're new around here, these daily creative challenges are meant to bolster your Photoshop skills over the course of two weeks. We have these challenges every morning uh, at 9 a.m. And then we have a Discord where you can post your works in progress and then you can post your final work on Behance. So let me get the challenge page open for y'all to see. Oh. Might help if I plugged in my computer. What's up, Ron? Good to see you, Jacqueline. Oleg says, morning from Miami. How you doing over there, Oleg? Safe? In the Florida sun? Probably not very sunny right now, to be honest. Okay, so let me get this big and open. Perfect, close this lower third. Great, I saw some people in Discord yesterday talking about uh, what their themes for their zines were going to be. And I'm interested to know, <laughs> Ted says, bolster me. <laughs> I'm interested to know if you have decided on the theme for your zine. Uh, we'll talk about mine in just a moment. It's humid, Alberto. Oh, good. I'm glad it's sunny at least. That's good. Get this music playing too. Have some nice tunes in the background. All right. So if you want to register for the challenge, you can come here to behands.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. There we go. You can click this button to register. And then if you scroll down, you'll see that today we're gonna to be learning about specifically about text and Photoshop, like I said. We're gonna be learning the difference between area and point type and then how to get typefaces into Photoshop and how to play with them in Photoshop. <laughs> nice, Steve, that's interesting. This is your cup of tea, Pam. It's great. Okay. So again, that's behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. And I mentioned Discord, so let's talk about that for just a quick moment. There's too many mice on my desk right now. I think I got it under control now, though. <laughs> if you want to join us on Discord, it's bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S. And that will allow you to join us here. It's a free app. You can do it on your phone, on your desktop, or uh, on the web. And it's a giant party. Someone was saying yesterday that they can confirm that there's always someone on Discord ready to give feedback. They post at all hours of the day. You can get feedback on your work. We've got one from Snow. Uh, warmed up the text. Thanks again. Nice. So Sam was in here giving feedback. This is probably Snow's cover image for the challenge. So yesterday, if you were around, we did an actual little paper mock-up of our zines so that we could kind of sketch out our layouts and see how we wanted our spreads to look together. Today, we're gonna to be doing the front and back cover. So that spread, imagine if you like opened up your zine and we're looking at the back and front cover at the same time. That's what we're going to knock out today. And I'm just gonna jump into Photoshop because we got a lot to cover. Everybody ready? Marcia says, I am down the rabbit hole, missed yesterday. No problem. We're starting with the first actual project right now. Okay, so this is the final product. This is what I'm gonna end up with by the end of the stream. Uh, but if you wanna download the starter file, you can do that by going to today's challenge, click get started, and that will take you to a little PSD that you can play with. Let's get back there. So I'll open the starter file and you'll notice the main difference is the text is missing. I have some placeholder text in here for you to play with, but I wanna show you how to get that big text and how to get these cool custom textured typefaces as well. Cause we don't have to make them. They are included with your CC subscription. So I'll show you how to get there. 
All right, let me move these over a little bit. If you are totally new to Photoshop, there's a lot going on on this screen right now, right? So very quickly, I'll just tell you over here on the left are your tools. We're just gonna be using the text or the type tool today. That's our main tool of the day. Up here, we have our options or controls. So depending on what tool that we select, you'll see that those options change at the top. And then on the right are, are, are our panels. So we're gonna be playing a lot with the properties panel today and the layers panel. Properties is how we're gonna change our typeface. You'll see properties right here. How we change our typeface, how we change the color of our type, that kind of thing. And then below that, I have the layers panel open. And if you open the starter file, you'll see all of these layers as well. So Photoshop works in layers. So let's, for example, say that we have these brush marks on a layer near the bottom or near the background. And then the type is on a layer on top. So you'll notice that the type appears on top of everything else. Very simple. And you'll also notice that I have my color palette here in the top right. You guys don't have a color palette in your starter file uh, because that's up to you. You can decide if you want a cohesive color palette across everything. Um, I actually asked you all on Instagram uh, what color palette you liked the best and I gave you a couple options and you picked this one. So I'm honoring that. I'm honoring that choice even though it was not my first choice. I like it. Now I'm really starting to like it. It's like a sherberty summer vibe which goes with the theme of my zine. So the theme of my zine is an ode to summer. A lot of us has, have spent our summers indoors mostly or far away from people that we love so this is called um well, let's just open it up solitude poetry zine so created indoors while dreaming of summer so every spread is going to have two poems specifically haikus because i think they're funny and uh pretty simple to write not good ones but it's pretty simple <laughs> workflow so you can maybe help me write some haikus in the days to come about different topics of being uh, socially distanced over the summer. Does that sound good? Now you don't have to do this. You can change the type and do whatever topic that you want. Like I mentioned, you could do one about shoes or about favorite recipes. It could just be a recipe book if you wanted to uh, do that. But mine is going to be a poetry zine. I need to put on my little beret, get my poetry vibe going. Okay. So I'm just going to leave all of the background assets as they are. I'm not going to play with them very much. You can play with them as much as you want, uh, but we're just going to talk about text. So specifically, we're going to be talking first about point and area text or type. Uh, let's see. Let's go over here to our tool, our type tool. It's going to be near the bottom over in your toolbar. And if you long press on it, you'll see there's a couple different tools within it. We're just going to use the horizontal type tool today. Now here is the difference between point and area type. Point type is perfect for adding text or type to a specific point or area of your design. So the way that you start point type is you literally just click and Photoshop will automatically fill in oops, some type maybe. Oh, but it's in the wrong layer. Let's do this. Okay, there we go. You just click and it will fill in some lorem ipsum for you. Now the cool thing about point type is that I can just keep typing. I can just keep typing and typing and typing and it will just keep going and going and going because there's no bounding box or area that it's constrained to. You might be wondering, well, what's the difference? Why would I use one over the other? Uh, but you would use point type specifically for small chunks of text. That's at least how I like to use it. So for the title of our zine, we'll use point type. And then if I delete this, if I go back to our type tool, we can try area type for longer flowing chunks of type. So to start area type, you use the same tool, but instead of just clicking to start it, we're going to draw out our box, our bounding box or our area. Now there is a setting in Photoshop that will automatically just fill your box with lorem ipsum or filler text. I have that turned on. So you'll see that there's just some type already added in here. It's pretty big. So let's go over here to our properties panel and in the character area, we can change the size of our text. So we can either drop open 
this menu and choose. Now it's a lot smaller. Or we can even grab, click, and drag on this slider, and you'll notice that the uh, values change as well. What's up, Robzilla? Good to see you. What brings you around here? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well. Okay, cool. So you notice that I just also changed the spacing between my lines. This might be perfect. Area type might be perfect for when we actually write our haikus or my haiku. You don't have to write them. Um, but we can change how the area or the whole block of text looks all at the same time. So that's changing the letting or the space between the lines. And we can also change the space between the letters themselves over down here with the tracking or kerning. So we could squish it together. That kind of looks good with this typeface because it's like a, a gritty uh, typewriter. We could increase it, make it a little more airy. But there we go. We have some body text and then maybe I will write title right here. Move that over just using the move tool. And I'm using some hotkeys. V is the hotkey to get back to the move tool. You can see the hotkeys for all of the tools right here. So if I go down here, hotkey for these is M, hotkey for this is V. So maybe I can do that. And let's start transforming our text a little bit. So like I said earlier, you can increase or decrease the size. Titles are usually a little bit bigger. We want them to stand out a little more or they will have more space. So it could be the same size, but just with a little more space around it. Okay, there we go. So difference between area and point type, super easy. Are there any sh keyboard shortcuts for tracking and letting? Yeah, there are. I know one off the top of my head. I'm, go I'm back in the text tool. Let me zoom in a little bit. If I select between these two letters and I hold option, oh, sorry. Yep, option. So I'm holding down option or alt if you're on a PC and then I'm using the right arrow key. That, you, that way you can add just a, like a little bit of room at a time. Nudge letters around. This is good for when you have your design finalized, but you're just trying to really finesse it. So I might bring that in a little bit. Again, I'm holding Option or Alt and just hitting the left and right arrow keys. You can also do the same thing with the letting. If I highlight some text, Hold Option or Alt and use the up and down arrow keys. Check out my letting values over here. I'll zoom in a little bit. I'm holding Option or Alt. I'm holding up. My letting gets smaller. Heading down, it gets larger in point size. Cool. So let's go ahead and add the actual title and a description for my zine. I'm gonna delete this lorem ipsum. So let's zoom in on this a little bit. I have my solitude, that's the name of my zine. Describing what it is, poetry zine. So these are both uh, just point type. I just clicked and started typing because they're not blocks of type. They're kind of standalone pieces of information. Solitude, poetry zine. Now for the created indoors while dreaming of summer, if I click into it, you'll notice there's a bounding box around it. So it's area type. And this way, if I wanted to decrease the size, I could do so, the size that it takes up, or I could increase it again. Cool. Alt arrows, yeah, thanks for the tip. Awesome, Pam, no problem. Marcia says, thanks, I'm using, I'm used to type in InDesign. That's a good point actually to bring up. So Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, they can do very similar things. They, they share a lot of the same tools, but they specialize in different areas. Uh, so usually if you're working with tons and tons of type, I mentioned this yesterday, you might want to work in InDesign or maybe even Illustrator. Uh, InDesign is really like the text powerhouse. But since our zine is very image heavy and very um, image editing heavy, like we're going to be changing lots of colors, we're going to be changing blend modes and cutting things out and selecting things very uh, in a complicated way, a simple but complicated way, uh, I've decided that Photoshop would be okay with this. And since we're just using haikus, it's gonna be like three lines of text. I think Photoshop can handle it. Speaking of what Photoshop can handle text-wise, you might be uh, 
wondering how I got these cool typefaces. So these do not really look like the generic typefaces that come preloaded on your machine. We've got this awesome texture in here. I thought this almost looked like a, a wood pressed, what's that called? Wood print <laughs> uh, poster, uh, actually like screen printed or letter pressed. So I really like that for the handmade kind of vibe of a zine. And then I also really like this typewriter typeface because I thought what's more romantic than a poem written on a typewriter, right? And then it has a little bit of this thick and thin uh, aspect to it that I thought went really well with our title typeface. So the way that I got these typefaces is I just went to my character panel and when you open them, you'll see that you have a couple different ways to filter over here. You have your Adobe fonts typefaces, which is what we're going to talk about in a second. Your favorite fonts, if you have any favorites marked, and then you can show similar fonts as well, which is pretty cool. No matches found because this one's very specific. And then to reset your filters, you just click again to reset. You can also change the class. So maybe you want specifically black letter typefaces, or maybe you want specifically script typefaces. I have a couple of these. If you know the vibe that you're going for, this can be really helpful. So maybe I'm not finding what I want still. I really want this cool kind of typewritery vibe. Well then let's go to Adobe fonts and check them out. So the, what you're gonna do is come over here to the right side of your panel and click this little Creative Cloud icon. And that's gonna launch Adobe fonts in your browser. And there you go, we've got a little bit of a welcome. Steve says Illustrator is the best type tool ever, the touch type tool, loads of fun with that. That's true. I like Illustrator type. Uh, I think because InDesign still intimidates me after all of these years, but Illustrator still has like some comfort. I have a comfort level in Illustrator in general. So it's a nice, it's a nice middle ground. All right, so in Adobe fonts, we can filter through things. Maybe I want to just search typewriter and see what comes up. I've got American typewriter, Nexus typewriter. Maybe I will put a space between the words. Nothing found there. Let me check out a typeface that I know the name of specifically. Chandler. There we go. We've got this cool typeface that has a bunch of thicks and thins. Now the way that I found this typeface originally is I believe I found it in a font pack. So if you're like me and you're like, I don't even know where to start where it comes to when it comes to typefaces, come up here to this top ribbon, click font packs, and that will take you to a bunch of basically packaged up fonts that have a similar uh, something in common. So for the first one, we can build a brand with them. Fonts for change, maybe good fonts for like a protest graphic. My internet's really slow today, so the images are not loading, but promise there's some cool graphics that go along with this. But let's go back to Chandler. So it's super duper easy to activate these. I was just logged into Creative Cloud and suddenly it logged me out, so that's cool. <laughs> but all you would do is find the font that you want and there would be a little slider here and you just click it, it would activate, and you would automatically be able to use it in Photoshop. Cool. When will Photoshop allow you to see sample type as a preview in the character menu as an illustrator? <laughs> That's true, Steve. That's a good point, Austin. So illustrator right now, you can see thousands of typefaces within it. You don't even have to go out of the uh, program to find a new typeface. That I think is coming, but it's not here yet. It's pretty cool though. All right. So we have our typefaces now in Photoshop. Like I said, super duper easy. You just click a slider and then it is in Photoshop for you. So if you wanna use the specific ones I'm using, uh, the starter file that I provided for you has them in it already. And in the past, you would have gotten like a pop-up if you hadn't downloaded them before saying like, hey, do you wanna activate these fonts? I don't see them activated on your subscription. But now if you're on the most recent version of Photoshop, they just automatically activate. And so you should just be able to start using them, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we have Chandler in here and we have a couple different weights of Chandler. You'll see them changing in real time. I'm using a little bit of a hierarchy here. 
So our title is the thickest and the largest, so that we look at that first. The kind of subtitle describing what it is, poetry zine, is still a little bit thicker, but it's smaller and in our body copy style. And then the description of what this is created indoors while dreaming of summer is thinner yet and also a lighter color. So there's kind of like a, you look at this first, this second, this third. Cool. Now I said earlier in the chat that we were going to, whoops, quickly talk about how to get this kind of style in our typeface. All this is, it's really simple, is I just clicked with the type tool. Let me start it, I'll just show you an example. Showing's always easier. I just clicked, typed S for example, we'll make it a lot bigger. And there we go. And then I just let that be its own little text object so you can move it around. Click, type again, O, click, type again, L, whoops, that did the same one, L, there we go. And that way you can place these letters however you want. You can have them kind of falling off the artboard if you want. So like they are up here at the top, this is just an L, its own layer, O, its own layer, L, its, uh, S, its own layer, O, L, I, T, U, D, E. And I just kind of placed them how I wanted them to fall off of the artboard. Now really quickly before we finish up, I just wanna make a mention of the template that I provided. I'm gonna turn everything off, else off really quick. With these templates, the gray box is the area that I'm trying to just focus the graphic. So for day one, the right side is the front cover, the left side is the back cover, and it's gonna fold right here in the middle. So I needed to make sure that most of my type that I needed to be legible was gonna be on the right, so it's gonna be on the front cover. Let me turn that back on. So here we go, we've got our type over here on the front cover. Then on the back cover, the front and the back kind of bleed together, but we have just more decorative information back here. There's no text because no one's gonna look at the back cover and read for the title. So then in the final piece, I went ahead and just plopped it in our um, major template for every single day. We've got our title on the right, this kind of giant solitude on the back that's acting kind of more like a visual texture and less of an actual word that you need to read, but I thought this would be cool. And I also like how it is bleeding over into other spreads. So when we fold up our zine, we're gonna get this little edge of the S in the day two and four spread. And this is gonna be kind of bled over into day six. I'm gonna try and do this throughout a lot of the spreads just to help them kind of flow together and look a little bit more organic. So there we go. I'm excited to see what all of your topics are going to be. Uh, hopefully you can decide on your topic for this cover so that for the rest of the zine, you can just continue through it. Uh, can you use the frame tool for the full zine layout? You totally can, Judith. And I provided a template for all of the spreads and you can either change these little rectangles into frames or you can change them into smart objects if you want and just put your files in. But I wanted to have a little bit more flexibility here so I am just putting them in as their own images. And then maybe at the end, I'll add some more like little visual details that will help tie them all together. Thanks, Marsha. Appreciate it. Why not use baseline shift instead of separating layer and for each character? Tim, that's a great question. Honestly, I feel like baseline shift is not the most beginner friendly tool, but that's a good point. You could use the same line of text and just lower or raise the baseline to make it look up and down. That's a great point. Thank you, Tim. Okay, so I think that's it for me. I can't wait to see what you guys all do. And let's pop over to the schedule for today. After me, Sam's going to be up for more character design and then come back for more Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges. We got an XD Daily Creative Challenge, uh, more XD and Doodle Therapy as well. So we got a full day. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for day two wonder what the challenge is going to be. But until then, I hope you guys have a great day and stick around because we've got Sam Peterson coming up right after me. Thanks, everybody. Bye.